The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN 9.06 a.m. Eastern Time, 24 minutes to go until the opening bell. And boy, some big earnings last night from Amazon. Apple trading higher as well. Intel a little bit lower. Roku getting punished in a big way. Some tough numbers for Roku, man, uh, to say the least. But the market, we trade above 4,100 last night, folks, on those Amazon, the Apple numbers, 4,111 this morning. We're giving back some of those gains. We get inflation data this morning. You're talking about records as well. But nonetheless, s and is up 12 points, 4,085. Quite the month, quite the week as we rack up, wrap up. Checking out the weekly, all right, interesting action. When you look at the weekly right now, we are right at a 3A2, folks. I was looking at this last night. We are right at a 3A2. I'll say it again on the S&Ps from 4808, the highs to start the year. You dive down to a low in the S&Ps of 3639. Since then, we have popped about 450 S&P points. And all you've done, though, folks, is you're right back to the 3A2. Also an interesting area that you're right back to the original lows that you had from February. 4101. We got 10 points above that price level this morning. We're backing off a little bit from that number, but nonetheless, market's holding up relatively well. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 60 points. Dow up, uh, excuse me, Dow slipping into the red, negative by 11 points right now. And the Russell basically flat. Bitcoin. Back to a short-term time frame, 15-minute chart, quite the week for Bitcoin. You trade from 20,700 on Tuesday to 24,600 early this morning. You've given up 1,000 points from that high overnight. We're trading 23,635. How about that crew contract? 99.58 for the price of crude. And today, folks, this is the last weekend, okay? We're going to have our man Teddy Kegstad on one final time Monday morning as your last opportunity, but he'll already have a weekly update. And there it is, $100 crude coming at you, man. Teddy's had some great calls recently, folks. I'll give him the plug right now. All right, we'll jump over to TFNN.com. Head on over to the front page of TFNN. Check out the Tiger Forex report. Use the code TEDDY25. You save 25% for as long as you subscribe, folks. You subscribe to this letter for 10 years. Teddy's still doing it for 10 years. You've still locked in 25% just because you signed up this month. And it still comes with a 30-day bunny back guarantee. There's some great information in there. Crude's rocking at 100 bucks. We got yields rocking today as well. And we got the markets rocking, man. Teddy was already emailing me this morning. And uh, he's got a good weekend plan, man. Teddy, he's rocking out at Lollapalooza. So we'll have something to talk about on Monday with our man, Teddy Kegstat. Uh, he'll have a new issue on Monday as well. And please check it out, folks, because Forex is running a lot of these markets right now. When you combine Forex, you combine the yields, which, of course, are impacted by the Fed, which are impacted by inflation. Right. And then you combine in there crude energy. That's the whole kit and caboodle, man. So please check it out. This is the last weekend. We'll have Teddy on Monday. You'll have that one last chance, but he'll already have a new issue out, folks. You sign up. You can check out the old issues. You'll get the new issue that comes out Monday. And he has updates throughout the week, sometimes when warranted. Uh, but yeah, how about it? I was jealous. Chatting with our man, Teddy Kegstat. He is out rocking it out at Lollapalooza. Gotta love it, man. Never been to Lollapalooza myself. But as I told Teddy, uh, concerts, one of my favorite things to do in life, folks. Uh, get out there and hit some concerts in a big way. And uh, I'll give you a little tease. He says, what a week in the markets this morning. Maybe the spike low for the U.S. dollar. Two more numbers this morning to lock in a trend today. That was from Teddy earlier this morning, folks. There's your take on it. And how about it to the tick? Crude, $100 as we come into Friday. All right, let's jump into it, and we'll kick things off with a little inflation data. Record prints, as usual, folks. The personal consumption expenditure, PCE, the Fed's preferred inflationary indicator, rose 6.8%, the biggest 12-month move since 1982 when it hit 6.9%. The index rose 1% from May. Okay. Yes. And again, this is June data, folks. Okay. I had to almost 
go back and say, wait, it's June data, right? And then I, in my own mind, I said, hold on a second. Are you sure of that? Because it's about to be August. Yes, this is June data. Talk about old stale data. Nonetheless, folks, okay? The index rose 1% from May. So think about the data we're getting, though. And this is why there's so much up in the air right now. There is room, and that's why for the... Um, for all the inflation data coming out right now, right? It's somewhat dated. So it kind of gives everybody a little bit to argue depending on what your feelings are and what your analysis, your personal take is on things. Because boy, of course numbers were rising in June versus May. The index rose 1% from May. Folks, it's about to be August. A lot has changed very quickly from May to June to July to now August, okay? Excluding food and energy. Now remember, energy was rocking, okay? To, to, to bring in some context of where crude was. There's June 9th, folks, okay? There's the end of June at a 110. I'm gonna zoom in on the month of June so you can see exactly where crude played for the entire month of June. There's your crude contract for the entire month of June. You were up to 124 early in the month. You came down June 22nd to 102. You were never below $100 for the entire month of June. Okay, so you take you take energy out of it. it takes food too, which is not so fair as well because energy is just so bonkers right now, and that's not fair either. Okay, but if you're trying to get a pulse of where inflation is going without the volatility of the crude contract, which is just so volatile right now, if you exclude food and energy, the core number increased 4.8% from a year ago. Again, this is June versus June, up one-tenth of a percentage point from May, but off of a recent high of 5.3% in February. So you got the core number down to 4.8 from 5.3 in February on a monthly basis. On a monthly basis though, core was up 0.6%, biggest monthly gain since April, 2021. Both core readings were 0.1 percentage points above the estimates. Not what you want to see. The only thing I'll say is it's stale data, man. It's almost going to be August. That is, that is data from June going from May. Okay, monthly data is June versus May. Can't get much staler than that when you're talking about a data point that is basically the most recent month, right? This is the most recent month data for PCE. Meanwhile, a lot of the statistics I just gave you are comparing June to May, and it's about to be August. And we know how quickly things are moving and how quickly things can change. Just look at some of the Fed estimates. Just look at some of the analysis of where they thought the Fed would be at the end of this year versus where they're probably gonna be right now, even if they pause things on the rate hikes. So nonetheless, we get that number this morning, pretty much in line, nothing too staggering, okay? We got a number of 6.8, we got a core number of 4.8, we miss to the high side by 0.1% month over month uh, on the core readings and on the yearly, something to keep your eye on, to say the least. All right, let's jump around to some of the equities with the action we have going on this morning. Look at that crude contract, folks. Listen, we got 40 seconds until the break right now. Please go check out the Tiger Forex report. I know I've been plugging it, folks, but Teddy, he does an outstanding job in this newsletter, folks. Uh, it's a privilege to have him on at TFNN doing this newsletter, man. Um, so please check it out. He's had some outstanding calls in this market, man. He was ahead of the crew call, ahead of almost anybody else I heard on Wall Street, folks. Uh, he was out there telling you, listen, crude is going higher, man. I'll have to... Maybe we'll get our producers to go back in the TFNN archives, man, and find it, because it is long time ago he was talking about crude. Check out the Tiger Forex report, folks. We got three minutes. You can go sign up now. You'll be signed up by the time we get back. We're gonna check out Amazon, Apple, Intel, and Roku when we get back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps positive by 12 points right now. we got about 12 minutes to go until the open. NASDAQ 100, you're up about 58 points. You've given up, though, about 150 points from where this thing spiked to last night. And jumping around to some of the numbers. Hold on one second as we pull this up, folks. I was trying to get the exact terms of the numbers that we were talking about here. Forgive me for one moment as I jump around. Okay, let's start it off with Amazon. Here we go. Amazon, you talk about coming back from the depths, man. This thing was just trading at almost 100 bucks early this uh, last month, 101.43. You were also down at a price point of 101.26 in May. You're gonna open today at pushing basically the area that we had that was the original pullback. Now, what's so interesting here is that this is kind of what the market's doing right now too. I brought it up in the S&P. All right. Critical, critical areas, folks. 4,100 to 4,200 in this market. We're going to reach some headwinds, man, in this market. I'm not sure if you go short right here. You could definitely trickle up a little bit higher. Putting this thing on a daily real quickly. Zooming in on the action, right? You start getting up to the lows that we had back in March, right? Back March 15th, whether it was the original low you had February 24th. Okay, that price level is about 4,160. You start coming into that, maybe 40, 4,150, about uh, 4,200 is about the 50% retracement line as well. Also correlating to the highs we had in May. Okay, that high, 42.02, within only a couple points. Now, bringing it back to Amazon, and zooming in on the action this year, today we're gonna open about 135, right? So check it out. Amazon basically just doing the same thing the market has done in terms of coming back into the areas that had been an area of support it's going to take some effort. You're also filling the gap that we had from last earnings, right? Pretty remarkable uh, that they get it all back, basically, from that last gap of earnings. You close the gap overnight. Okay, now what is that gap exactly? 135.78. We're going to open just under 135 for Amazon shares. Some of the numbers for Amazon shares. Now, here's a couple anecdotal tidbits that they came out with. Uh, 
and I'll give you the headline numbers in a moment. One thing I found interesting, they shaved their headcount, okay, by about 100,000 workers, 99,000 workers. They're down to 1.52 million employees as of the end of the second quarter after almost doubling in size during the pandemic. I was saying to friends last night, absolutely remarkable how these companies can hire and fire or just let go or use, you know, you know, third party deliveries, right? Using different people, but you hire and fire, man. So many workers in such a short period of time, getting rid of 100,000 workers over a period of 90 days. Meanwhile, they doubled their workforce during the pandemic, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of workers, but they're working on efficiency. They're working on third party delivery. Uh, AWS, I was joking, AWS for life, if you're an Amazon shareholder, folks. Operating income, which excludes the investment related loss, shrank to 3.3 billion. I got the lawn guy outside the, the office this morning. Hopefully you can hear me. Operating income, which excludes investment-related losses. Now, that's important because they have some investment-related losses in Rivian, to be specific, okay? Shrank to $3.3 billion from $7.7 billion a year earlier. So, uh, to repeat that, operating income, which excludes investment-related, so shrank to $3.3 billion. AWS alone generated operating income of 5.7 billion, accounting for all the profit and then some of the loss they had in different areas of the business, right? AWS folks, you know, Amazon is most notable to consumers because of their retail presence. Retail, actually shrinking. I'm gonna see if I can find that. I was reading it last night. Let's see what they talk about in the article I got pulled up here. We'll kick it off with Amazon. Jumps on revenue beat and rosy guidance. Yeah, guidance, the big deal, so check it out. Earnings per share was a loss of 20 cents. Now, what they do say in here, I think, is that analysts were so all over the place on some of the numbers in terms of profits that it was really hard to actually peg a real estimate on some of these numbers. But nonetheless, revenue, they beat by more than $2 billion. Amazon Web Services, they beat. Advertising was a big highlight for Amazon. Uh, still not quite to the likes of Facebook and Google Alphabet, but advertising a big rising part of their revenue business and one of the bright spots of this quarterly earning. So they expect, this is one of the big parts that really the market loved here. Third quarter revenue, okay, forward-looking statements. The market is all about forward-looking statements as we all know, right? Forward-looking statements, next quarter, 125 to 130 billion, 13 to 17% growth. Now the market was looking for 126.4, so they might come in at 126.4, they might come in a little bit under, but the middle of that range is $1.1 billion above where they were looking for on that market. There's where it says they lost 100,000 workers to 1.52 million. Uh, yes, and look at that, so $3.9 billion loss on its Rivian investment after shares of the electric vehicle maker plunged 49%. The total loss of that investment this year, 11.5 five billion dollars for Rivian. Now I imagine that they probably had some some profits that, that as that Rivian those Rivian shares went public, right? They've just kind of had to give all that back. Uh, because of the Rivian write down, they had an overall loss of two billion dollars in the quarter. But again, three point nine of that was the Rivian investment, right? They would have made two billion dollars outside of that. But guess what? They were making all that money in AWS, man. Now, the e commerce business for Amazon if Amazon was just Amazon.com retail, I would not be a shareholder of that, folks. I mean, you could make a case. The multiples would be far, far different. Okay, the company's online store segment declined 4.4% year over year. That's it. That's the line. The company's online store segment declined 4% year over year. Amazon selling 4% less items on Amazon.com than they did four years ago. Physical store sales continue to rebound. Now, they have... Uh, whether it's groceries, whether it's just Amazon stores, uh, they do have a physical presence that is growing, but slowly ad revenue, as I talked about, climbing 18% in the period. Uh, you know, they're working with smaller numbers. So of course they should be growing more exponentially, but nonetheless, 18%, the market like that. How about AWS? 33% to 19.74 billion, 33%. I mean, if you're, you're growing a $20 billion dollar business by 33%. Market was looking for 19.56, they come in at 19.74, and as I mentioned, operating income, all of the 5.7 billion basically from AWS, and then they lose some money in other areas of their business. So strong numbers from Amazon, they love the outlook, uh, and they love the fact probably that they would have been in a profit if Rivian had just done a little bit better. Not so much the case, Amazon, they're gonna open about 14 bucks higher. You're talking about 
12% open to the upside for Amazon shares. Now, Apple. Apple had some strong numbers as well. There's your acceleration on their earnings up to 164. You're back to 161 for Apple shares. Pretty interesting that we make it through this week with basically some really strong numbers, man. Uh, now, we're going to jump to Roku in a, in a heartbeat, man. And Roku's got some big problems, man. They had huge misses across the board. Uh, Apple beats on revenue and profit, expects growth to accelerate despite, quote unquote, pockets of softness. Uh, in terms of an outlook in the aggregate, we expect revenue to accelerate in the September quarter, despite seeing some pockets of softness. Always nice when you see an acceleration of revenue. They beat on earnings. They are down year over year. They beat on revenue though. iPhone revenue, I don't know who's buying all these iPhones still, folks. Uh, 40.6 billion versus 38.33, not bad. Services, a slight miss there. Other product revenue, decent miss. You're talking about $800 million miss in other product revenue. Now that's, I believe that ties in the watch, right? I believe that ties in the AirPods. Pretty remarkable, that segment alone is eight billion bucks. Mac revenue, a miss as well, to the tune of almost 1.5 billion. iPads are up, gross margins. What a number, man, 43%. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be coming back for the open. We'll be talking Intel and Roku, some other companies as well. We'll be right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Mr. Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you have the S&P right now, holding at about 15 points. NASDAQ 100, holding at about 58 points. Both of them in the green, the Dow up by 30, and the Russell barely negative by one. Crude, sitting right at about $100, You got the silver contract right now, right near about $20, oscillating around that area. And we jump to notes and bonds. You got a little bit of a pullback from where we were yesterday. You got the 10-year right now. Negative six ticks just off the high we had uh, of about 121 overnight, 121.06, almost right back to that 121.08 area that we were at early yesterday. On the 10-year, the 30-year right now, negative by 10 ticks at 142.27, and we jump over to the VIX. Talk about sucking out some volatility, man. The VIX with a 21 handle. Did you hear that, folks? The VIX. The VIX has a 21 handle. Did you hear that? Did I stutter? You're back to April. It's about to be August. You're back to April, folks. We haven't seen a 21 handle in three plus months. Remarkable, the moves across the board uh, everywhere in this market. Let's check in on the big boys, see how they're trading on the open. Amazon gives back a little of that open, but you're still up by about 10% right now. Amazon up $12, trading at 134.49. We jump over to Apple shares, up about 2.4% right now. We jump over to the cratering company of the morning, Roku, down 23.9%. I'll pull up their numbers in a moment. You talk about a miss on revenue on an outlook basis. Woo-wee. My goodness. Uh, and Intel down as well, off 10.5%, man. Intel below the recent lows before you accelerated higher. Jumping back to Roku. So right now, Roku, you're talking about a market cap of about $9 billion. I was just looking at it over the break. $8.8 .8 billion right now for that company. That's still a lot of dollars, man, for a company. Uh, as our man Dave White likes to say in the Tiger's Den, he was in there last night after 4 o'clock. How do they make money? Well, they make money some way. They don't actually bring it to the bottom line, though. Uh, and some of the numbers. So here's, here's some of the numbers that I had pulled up from Roku. All right. A net loss of 112 million, or 82 cents a share, okay? The big number here, folks, third quarter revenue guidance, this is the one that struck me. 700 million, okay? They just took in 764 million, okay? Third quarter net guidance, 700 million. What was the market looking for? 900 million. That's a 30% miss on revenue. Did you hear that? Could you imagine what would happen if a company like Amazon missed by 30% on revenue? Oh, yeah, that's I, I had to do a double take when I saw that third quarter revenue got in 700 million significantly. I don't think the word significantly does enough in this sentence to display how big of a miss that is from eight hundred and ninety eight million seven hundred. Man, you're missing two hundred million in 90 days. And that two hundred million represents 30 percent of the number you were thinking that you were going to take in. Now, they're talking about a significant slowdown in TV advertising spend due to macroeconomic environment. Of course, a company that misses this big is going to blame the macroeconomic environment, folks. That may be part of it, um, but everybody's not missing by 30 percent, okay? I mean, imagine if you have advertisers, right? Google's got advertisers. Facebook has advertisers. They didn't lose 30 percent of their business, all right? And I've been talking about that there might be some value for Roku here, folks. You could take a flyer. Um, at some point, I imagine there will be some value in a company that has, I think, $63 million set top boxes customers actually going up for them by about one to one and a half million i think for the quarter they're at about 63 million customers uh they're making like something like 44 dollars per a customer i gotta pull it up i was checking out all the numbers last night strong numbers but they're losing a lot of money man i mean if you're like some growth company startup I imagine there's got to be some value for this company folks you know you're you're a set top box you're in 60 plus million households you're taking in $700 million per a quarter, but I don't know because it just keeps getting worse and worse. And who was in there in terms of the C-suite in Roku talking about $900 million next quarter and they're only coming in at $700 million? That is a mammoth miss. Uh, you almost think that they should have had to restate a material fact because that seems like that should have become apparent well before earnings that things were going very amiss um, recently. Nonetheless, a huge miss. They're in big trouble, and the stock, not even stopping, folks. You're at $62 and change right now, down 25.8%, and that is from a price point of $490. Oh, just staggering, some of these companies. Okay, let's jump to Intel. Intel shares lower this morning, below the recent lows. Intel off 10.7%. Some of the headlines on Intel, you got their CFO saying, we're on the bottom. 
Well, very, very astute of you, um, Chief Financial Officer. After the company misses earnings and stock sinks, 29 cents a share, they were supposed to make 70. How about that revenue miss, right? What is that? That's a that's a huge miss as well, man. What is that, 2.6 billion? Was that 15%? So Amazon misses on revenue by 15%, but they miss on that number for 18 billion. Roku misses by 30% on a number of 900 million. You could make the case that missing on 15% when you're supposed to take in $18 billion would be a bigger number. Um, but nonetheless, percentage-wise, Roku, I don't even know how they exist right now. Uh, maybe they do need to get bought out. Maybe that's their only path. Maybe they just don't have a path as an individual company to make enough when they're just competing with so much advertising dollars. Intel's revenue declined 22% year-over-year year in the quarter that ended July 2nd. Revenue missed consensus by, there it is, 14%. Uh, largest top line disappointment since 1999. You can't overstate when companies like this miss by double digit percentages, folks. It ended the quarter with 454 million net loss compared with net income of 5 billion in a year ago quarter. Gross margin, 36.5 down from 50.4. Just bad numbers all over the place. With respect to guidance, they're looking for 35 cents in adjusted earnings per share on 15 to 16 billion. The market, 86 cents on 18.62 billion. They come in at the bottom range of that and you're shaving 3.6 billion off. It's literally almost 20% to the tick, folks. 15 to 20% of Amazon revenue just disappeared overnight. I, I, I don't think 10% might be a big enough haircut for that stock with that type of a statistic, folks. Uh, you don't often see that type of a number. I mean, to put it in context, right? What did Amazon just say? They're looking for 125 to $130 billion in revenue, right? What if they miss by 18 billion? That's 15%. What if they miss by 25 billion? That would be 20%. Whew. Yeah, you get the point. Uh, let's jump back to see how those big dogs are trading. Amazon holding up at about 10% on that number, and Apple holding up right now up 1.6%. They give it back a little bit, but all the markets holding up relatively well right now with the NASDAQ in the positive, S&Ps in the positive. I mean, look at the weekly, folks. We could just hold where we're at. We're at quite a weekly bar, finishing four straight weeks of the biggest companies out there trading higher. You jump back to the ES, pretty similar action. Right, We had a red bar in there as well, but you're talking about over four weeks trading from a price point. You're up 250 points in the S&P just from four weeks ago, let alone you're now approaching, what did we say, 450 points off of the technical low we had in early June as we're sitting right near 4,100. But as I talked about, man, keep those spikes up, folks. Keep them up. We're coming into August, and we are coming into a critical area in these markets. Number one, you got the S&P. We've just bounced to the 382, folks. Right there, almost to the tick, 4,085. You're also coming into an area that was the area of support, potentially turning into an area of resistance. I mean, you come right into the low we had on February 21st, folks. Come right into that low, which also correlates to the 382. Going to be some interesting action going forward. Stay tuned, folks. We've got a couple more segments to go. We'll take a look at what earnings we have next week. Coming up next. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstat has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now up 27 points, sitting right at 4,100. Markets catching a little bit of a lift from the pullback we had. It was low as almost 4,080. We're now sitting at 4,100. Uh, NASDAQ 100 catching a little bit of a lift as well. Still about 100 points off of where you were last night as the markets accelerated higher on Amazon and Apple earnings. We jump over to commodities. Crude sitting at about 100 bucks. You're up 343 on the session. And that gold contract, quite a week for gold, right? Up to 1784. You're back to 1771. If you trade gold, folks, please come on over to the front page of TFNN. Check out the Tiger Forex report. Very important to understand the currencies, whether it's the yen, whether it's the dollar, whether it's yields. Check it out, please. Uh, gold, really nice acceleration. Uh, we have had a little bit of a dollar volatility that's going to play into the price of gold we'll see where it goes from there all right checking in on some of the companies that are coming out next week so let's check it out some of the ones that caught my eye i believe we got paypal let's kick things off on earnings yes august 2nd so paypal they're out with their numbers on tuesday we talk about some volatility recently back things up on a three-year weekly down from 310 to 67 dollars you're up to 86 just chopping around on this lower consolidation the covid lows 82 bucks. Can you believe that one, right? Well below that price level. So PayPal will be out with their numbers on Tuesday. We also get Starbucks, one of the companies out with their numbers. We jump over. Starbucks coming out with Tuesday numbers as well. Now Starbucks, you talk about a pullback. Quite a little bounce here. We make a low of $68. You're up to 84 uh, All things considered, though, we got to find a bid here. Let's see what kind of bounce we're getting on a Fibonacci basis on Starbucks numbers. If you're looking for a 382 on this number for Starbucks, Maybe 88 bucks. And that's correlating also to the 50% of the entire COVID run you had higher. Yeah, so about 88 bucks would be the, that's an area potentially run into a little bit of resistance. Also an area chopped around in early in the month. But Starbucks will be out with their numbers on Tuesday along with PayPal. Caterpillar out with their numbers next week. And again, these are just some of the notable ones. Decent week for Caterpillar, man. Check out this chart. Quite a pop from 167 up to 90. But again, I mean, we have some pretty steep pullbacks in this market, folks. Not even at the 382 yet for Caterpillar. Inching towards that level, the 382 for this entire move lower this year for Caterpillar, only about a couple bucks above where we're at right now. You're trading at 190.47, that 382 at about 192. And they're coming out with their numbers on Tuesday as well. So look at this, Tuesday's going to be a big day for sure. Uh, CVS, I believe, out with their numbers. Wednesday. So CVS out with their numbers Wednesday. You jump over to the chart for CVS. Held up pretty pretty well, considering where the market's been. You're trading at about 95, 93 for CVS. Uh, what do we get? We get advanced micro devices. We'll see how they fare. Amazon, uh, excuse me, Intel not faring too well. AMD catching a lift today, though, up 1.9%. 
Let's see when they're coming out with their numbers. They'll be Tuesday as well. Tuesday's going to be a big day, huh? Uh, Eli Lilly out with their numbers next week, I believe. Thursday, they'll be out with their numbers. Uh, Amgen out with their numbers Let's next week. Let's jump around. Amgen on Thursday as well. What other companies out there? You got ConocoPhillips out with their numbers. Uh, Cigna is going to be out with their numbers. Let's see where Cigna is. CI, I think. Is that them? Yeah, Thursday as well for Cigna. Look at that chart. Talk about an acceleration, man. Right near highs of 288 Cigna, sitting at 276 right now as we got this market holding up relatively well, to say the least. All right, let's see what else I got pulled up here in terms of what we're talking about. We talked about Apple and Amazon, of course. Uh, this one's just an interesting one. If you don't expect this to be happening, folks, you're not paying attention. Chinese government asked TikTok for stealth propaganda account. I'm surprised they ask because I don't think that's how it actually works in China, folks. Um, I'm surprised by this whole article in terms of China asked for social account targeting Western audiences. That's not how it's working over there, folks. TikTok senior policy team pushed back on a sensitive request. Good luck to the TikTok senior policy team pushing back on China's request. That's not how it works, right? Almost, I can't even say it tongue in cheek, tongue in cheek enough in terms of something like that happening. I deleted this app recently off of my phone, folks. I would encourage you to do the same if you don't want Chinese, um, Chinese dictators being able to track you. The government entity responsible for public relations attempted to open a stealth account on TikTok targeting Western audiences. Folks, this is the whole reason that TikTok exists is so that China can control this type of stuff. The attempt, which met with pushback from TikTok execs, highlights the internal tensions with the fast-growing social media app owned by Beijing. Beijing-based. you hear that? They are based in Beijing. Do you think China government asks any company based in Beijing anything? Uh, the, as, as a famous gentleman once said, they're going to make them an offer they can't refuse. That's how it would work, folks. That's why the whole article is kind of tongue-in-cheek to me that they'd say that. Uh, in an April 2020 me message addressed to TikTok's head of government relations for the UK, Ireland, Netherlands, and Israel, a colleague flagged a Chinese government entity that's interested in joining TikTok but would not want to be openly seen as a government account as the main purpose is for promoting content that showcase the best side of China. Uh, other way of saying that is it's going to be propaganda for the government. It's going to play out, folks. I would not trust that app at all. That app is blown up in a big way, to say the least. Uh, but be very careful, because if you don't want China on your data, man, then don't use that. And that's the way it is. I mean, that that app is just straight out Chinese government. Now, interesting, you jump to Instagram. So this headline, Instagram rolling back changes after the Kardashians slammed the app for being like TikTok. Here's what I will say. All right, let's jump over to Meta. They had some tough numbers out this week as this market just rocks higher, man. You can't hold this market down today, man, except for Meta. You can hold Meta down today, uh, down 1.7 percent. Tough week from Meta, Facebook. So they just changed Instagram. And I like Instagram, folks. I actually do. Uh, I like that it doesn't become as political, right? It's pictures, maybe some fun videos. I enjoy it much more than Facebook to the nth degree. But they just changed the algorithm and the look where basically everything looked like you're in reels to basically mimic TikTok, okay? And I, I actually pulled it up one morning and I said to my friends, are you guys all seeing this huge update on Instagram? I don't really like it. It's all just reels. And one of my friends said, no, I think you're stuck in reels. And there's an option. I said, no, I'm not stuck in reels. They changed the whole app. And what they had done is they had rolled it out selectively. So some of my friends still had the old app where it basically had a timeline feature on Instagram. We were rolling through posts. And the other app that I was using, somehow you were selected, right? Some of my friends had the new option, some had the old option, and the new option was just like Reels or TikTok, where everything was a video, it was full screen, uh, and I was just not a fan of it, right? But people don't like change at all, and I'm sure they do a tremendous amount of testing on this. That's why they're doing selective accounts, right? They're probably seeing how many hours a day are you using it for the new setup, how many hours are you using it for the old setup, how are you commenting, are you liking, all of that stuff. Um, Maybe there's an update. So what ended up happening, Mike, is that it just, I woke up one morning and they had updated it. They had just changed the, the whole deal. And it, it was a selective update that some of the friends had it. It was a selective rollout. In going out afterwards and looking at it, it was a, it was a purposeful selective rollout that they were doing. Uh, and they're catching some flack for it. And I guess they, they're thinking about rolling it back. Um, we'll still push algorithmically recommended videos and is trying to improve the technology. I mean, this one's a tough one, man. You just can't make up a new product and compete with them. Instagram is not the same as TikTok, folks. 
Um, Facebook is not the same at all. But uh, Instagram chief said in a letter Thursday that it's going to roll back its recently released version of Instagram that predominantly featured algorithmically recommended videos to users on their home screen. So normally you would just view your friends' videos, right? But the way TikTok works is that they push random videos to you. So that's what Instagram was trying to do. But well, folks, I'm not on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. It's it's a big mess. And Facebook's chart, missing Meta's chart, it says it, man. Not a fan of the new IG layout. I agree, my swap. We'll be right back for the end of the show, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the energy companies making tens of billions of dollars as crude is spiking, folks. Here's Exxon. You're up 3.6% right now. There's your acceleration on their numbers, man. And you talk about an acceleration. Check out these profits. We'll start with the headline number. Exxon and Chevron score record profits as energy markets convulse. Lifts buybacks 50% for Chevron, beating all profit forecasts. Exxon holds firm on share repurchases after blowout quarter. You talk about money, man. My goodness. Exxon and Chevron made $30 billion in combined earnings in 90 days, folks. And if you think that's normal, check out the chart going back to 2012. Chevron's in the blue. Exxon is in the black. And you see the ramp up. Pretty extraordinary. For 90 days, 
You have Exxon making $18 billion, and you have Chevron making $12 billion. This goes beyond just gas pumps, okay? They got natural gas in here as well, uh, but it's across the board, man. Uh, Exxon, second quarter adjusted earnings, 414 a share, beating estimates. Net income, $17.9 billion, surpassing the previous record set in 2008. Chevron, net income, 11.6, also exceeding the previous record set in 2008 by almost 50%. Whew. Amazing. Uh, the scale of big oil's earnings, even a surprise for even the analysts had expected some big things, man. Uh, pretty remarkable numbers, to say the least. Folks, please check out the Tiger Forex Report, our man Teddy Kekstat. We're going to talk to him one last time on Monday to promote this. We'll talk to him every Wednesday as well. But this is your last shot to save 25%. Check it out. Uh, and also, Steve Rhodes had an outstanding report he put out last Friday. He was talking about the market trade and higher, folks. Kudos to Steve with a great call as well. You can check out this free report right for free. No string attached, nothing to sign up for. You don't have to sign up for Mastering Probability. You click right on that link on the front page. There's his special report. And kudos to Steve, man. He had a heck of a call. And boy, this week, we're off to the races so far, folks. And of course, check out the Tiger Stand on the front page of TFNN as well. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next, folks. Uh, he may be doing double duty. Our man Larry, a little under the weather. We hope to get him back soon. He's doing okay. Uh, but Basil, coming up next, might be doing some double duty uh, and the opening call. Stay tuned, folks. Thank you so much for starting your trading day off with me. Our man Basil, he's coming up next. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody.